What's up Rito, Shade Tree Surgeon here, and you'll know I've been a huge proponent of this, I've been so outspoken that Honda really does make just the best motorcycle of all time. Not all their motorcycles, Honda certainly has made some stinkers, but it's easy to give the crown of the greatest motorcycle of all time to one certain model that they make. And that of course is the Trail 125, baby. Honda Trail 125, the other, other red meat. Trail 125, baby, it's what's for dinner. And of course, when I say Trail 125, I don't mean just the Trail 125. I mean, the entirety of the Super Cub line is very obviously the greatest motorcycle of all time. Because I'm pretty sure if you count the number of people in the world who own or have ridden on motorcycles, if you count them all up, I'm talking everywhere, not just America, if you count them all up, I think that the Super Cub, which is the Trail 125, Trail 90, and uh, the Super Cubs, of course, and everything else that falls into that distinction of the same platform. Well, that motorcycle is one of the most universal motorcycles in the freaking world, man. There are more Super Cubs on the road and more people who have experienced life on two wheels on a Super Cub than any other two mo or probably three motorcycles put together. It really deserves a Lifetime Achievement Award. And I'm sure there's plenty of you guys out there who are super familiar with C90 Adventures. It's been a huge inspiration both to me and Shaylee and why this little Trail 125 bears the moniker of Ed. But another huge inspiration for us to get into Super Cubs and just an awesome channel in general. One of my favorite non-English speaking channels, I will say. I've got a few non-English speaking channels that I watch, but this is definitely definitely in the top of them you know and most of my watch just because they have great visuals i don't really know what they're saying and they usually don't speak a lick of english or very rarely at least but stuart chung in taiwan uh, and i just watched a video from him and it was a, a super cub meetup in taiwan that just looked freaking awesome seeing like all the different model years and all the different super cubs that showed up and of course there was the newer trail 125s and the newer 125 cub that they put out but just it lets you know like how prevalent this motorcycle is across the world and not just that it's prevalent across the world as just transportation because you might go like oh yeah dude freaking asian countries are putting like six people on it it's the family truck as a super cub that, that is true in a lot of places it's an amazing vehicle that it is how people get from villages to the towns and how they transport everything like it is a, a workhorse definitely a truck but there's just as many people in taiwan and small asian countries at the well, i don't know if taiwan really qualifies as small but you know what i mean in taiwan japan and vietnam and indonesia and the philippines and all those places who are taking awesome motorcycle camping adventures that like i'm telling you their cinematography is out of control and it just makes me want to be a better youtuber it makes me want to make better videos you know what i mean and a lot of them are doing it on super cubs or 125s or or something like that so it is really cool to watch check out Stuart chung and uh you can tell him shade tree surgeon sent you but i don't know <laughs> I don't know if that'll mean anything to him because there is a little bit of a language barrier there but uh hey motorcycles uh that's the universal language the love of two wheels right baby me and shay lisi just got our passports and uh, i'm pretty excited to tour other places in the world even though i feel like there's tons of america that i haven't seen yet and i don't want to see but we are excited to go to other places and we're really excited to go to parts of asia we want to go to vietnam and we want to go to taiwan and we want to go to we'd love to go to japan just going to japan is pretty goddamn expensive compared to going to some of these other places and i will tell you probably one of the number one bikes you're going to see over there and the bike that we'll probably end up riding around is the mighty trail 125 and uh you know what i can't think of a better way to see the entire world i mean i would take a sportster i take a i take my dirt sure if i could but but the trail 125 hey what can we say when in rome do as the romans do right now we're in tampa so we're gonna do as the tampons do and let's go ahead and pull the plug and head over to the ride factory and see what the boys are up to over there today joe the mountain jet I has a special surprise for me from the wife unit and I'm excited to check that out. Although it never really takes much of an excuse for me to come up here and see what they're up to at the ride factory. Always something exciting happening.
Well, as I always say, the Ride Factory works on just about anything. And funny that I was talking about Trail 125 and the Superco platform on the way over here because even though Shelby's working on a, that's a really beautiful Evo. Holy crap. Yeah, I just took a look at it. I think it's gorgeous. But funny we were talking about the Superco because uh, there is uh, something from the old Super Cub platform on the lift. It just looks so funny on a lift that's long enough to accept a long fork chopper. <laughs> See a Honda Trail 70 up there and uh, its matching partner over there. Pretty freaking cool, man. You wanna talk about super secret squirrel. This is a design that got shared in the Discord as a prototype literally uh, like 12 hours ago. Everyone around here is handy and everyone around here has other hobbies besides motorcycles. The amount of stuff that Shelby and Joe get up to on their free time would uh, shock and amaze you. But Joe the Mountain Wife, or I'm sorry, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> the wife unit of Joe the Mountain Jedi also came up with this after snagging it from the Discord as a prototype for something that uh, you're gonna have to wait a little bit for. Eventually, these will be coming. Very cool. Good luck, man. That looks like <laughs> you're doing it for a good cause, but I know it's always a pain in the butt, man. <laughs> We're nearing the end now. <laughs> Famous last words, my friend. I'm getting close. We're nearing the end. This and other lies I tell girls after they come home with me after an all night bender with the boys on a Friday night. <laughs> Come on, keep on trying, baby. We're almost there, I swear. <laughs> My man who owns this uh, Street Glide, or I guess an Ultra Classic, whatever it is, just rolled down from Michigan. He moved down here and started taking his stuff to the Ride Factory. It reminds me of the old Coney Island bikes. So before choppers in the 60s, there was a Coney Island bikes and they just had just all sorts of chrome and crash guards and uh, about 100 million taillights that look like that and fringe and you never see them anymore because choppers took over and everyone bought the old Coney Island bikes and threw all this stuff away. You saw it translate a lot into to gold wings. Yeah. So the gold wings of the 80s, all the stuff in the drag specialties catalog looked a lot like old Coney Island chopper stuff. And I like it too. And I'm not saying it's just a black thing or just a Spanish thing or whatever it is, but I'm just saying you saw a lot of black dudes who just kitted out these old bikes and gold wings with all this stuff. And like I said, you can't barely find it anymore. So if you find a Coney Island survivor, that's an amazing freaking motorcycle right there. You definitely don't have to kick this bike, but it's still pretty cool that it comes with a Kickstarter. And you can keep your BMW GSs and all these other motorcycles that have supposedly made it to the far reaches of the world. There is nothing that goes so remote and so into the depths of the backwoods than a Honda Trail 125. A bike that actually deserves its Kickstarter, okay? Well, I love the boys at the Ride Factory. Everything from Honda CT70s to full dress Evo <laughs> ultra classic on the lift. You never know what you're going to find up there, and I really dig it. And of course, Romy's bike. If you guys don't know about that, Romy, when he came back from the war, he uh, had lost use of everything below his neck. Very long time ago, uh, when I very first had a fledgling YouTube channel that barely had any motorcycle content on it, mainly hunting content, we actually raffled off a bike at the Dirty Shame, his old bike. But then a uh, few people got together and they ended up building him that bike that his wheelchair can actually go into the sidecar. It's really, really freaking cool. So yeah, Romy still gets to ride and it might be in the sidecar in his wheelchair, but you know what, baby? <laughs> he probably never thought he was going to be on a motorcycle ever again. So I dig that. We are doing our very, very best tacking orders here to keep Bilbo hairs out of them. He's a very hairy fellow. <laughs> Dramatic. We got a hair on somebody's order and they left us a four star review instead of a five star review because there was a Bilbo hair on it. Actually a cat hair. Oh, it's a cat. It could have been a Bilbo hair. Could have been. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> back to work. Good work though. It's good work. Work I'm happy about. to take all of your packages, all these Brap Star packages up to the post office and the truck of the world, the Honda Trail 125, the mighty Trail 125, the indomitable Trail 125. Though we can probably say the actual truck of the world is the Toyota Hilux favored by armed insurgents, insurrectionists, and jihad everywhere. But the kinder, gentler truck of the world is the Honda Trail 125, the Honda Super Cub. I know nobody ever made a Honda
the Cub into a technical, okay? Nobody was ever firing RPGs off a Honda Trail 120. Well, actually, maybe they have. I don't actually know that. But, you know, has anybody ever, have you ever made a Super Cub technical? There's probably some country out there that's taken the Super Cub platform and turned it into a technical. I don't really know. I'm just going to say the kinder, gentler truck of the world. This actually has a higher rated rear carrying capacity than almost any other motorcycle ever made. So the only time I actually do what this thing's really made to do is when I take it to the post office. Well, me, Cammy Bay, and Shaylisi stayed up late last night trying to make these packages nice for y'all. And uh, these ones are definitely getting there before Christmas, but unfortunately there was a delay with uh, some of the blanks, specifically some of the flannel lined duck cloth jacket blanks that we did the down with my demons design on. Those were supposed to be here last week. Uh, they were delayed. They were coming from Washington and this time of year it can happen. So we're not actually going to get those in our hands to pack up till tomorrow. So we're on the edge. I don't think that those are going to make it in time for Christmas. And you know me, I love to be like on the edge. Uh, speaking of on the edge and edging, Madam Hex is hanging out later, but you guys uh, know I love to be edging. <laughs> let, me, let me rephrase that. You guys know I love to make it seem like everything's crazy. We're on the edge and then secretly make it. I actually don't think that those are going to make it. So we're going to try to make them extra special and throw some extra stuff in there for them for all the ones that aren't going to make it for Christmas. It's out of my hands. Unfortunately, there's nothing I can do, do about it when, uh, when they're getting shipped to us and we don't actually have them to print and you know it, it takes way longer than we thought there's nothing i can do about it man and it uh, really bums me out man because i saw a lot of girls names on those orders and makes me assume that those are girls ordering them for their boyfriends or husbands to open up on christmas and not all of them are going to get there for christmas we're gonna get a lot of them there for christmas but i don't know if all of them are going to be there on christmas day i'm sorry guys and though i would love to blame my arch nemeses the usps i think that the blanks actually get delivered fedex so <laughs> i can't, I can't can't even blame it on my favorite whipping boy, the, the United States Postal Service. And just because I can't blame that one on him doesn't mean I can't take a perverse joy in once again getting away without dropping off a manifest during Christmas, no less. The USPS shall never know a peaceful night so long as I draw breath. Actually, I can't even be mean to this time of year. I can't be mean to them at all. We're actually doing it right. We're dropping off manifests and treating them right because Christmas time at the USPS, that's like, that's the armistice, man. We gotta, we gotta come to a peace accord around Christmas time with the USPS because that's when uh that's like that world war one stories when uh, the two sides declared a truce just to kill some wolves because they were doing trench warfare and wolves just kept like murking people and pulling them out of the trenches can you imagine that that you're in trench warfare in world war one and just you're just like shooting at people and you're freezing to death and you're wearing whatever bullshit ass clothes they gave you and you don't even know why you're there and then every once in a while a wolf just pulls somebody out of the trench and devours them that's a pretty bad time and i think it was around christmas time during that too so we're going to declare a truce around christmas time with usps and we're going to be nice to them this time of year because uh, they got it pretty rough let me tell you once christmas is over it's over for them my compassion only lasts so long and shade tree army will rise to strike again and speaking of being struck let's go hang out with shade tree army's favorite dominatrix madam exa not that i can blame her but i've uh, been overruled overturned outclassed Instead of uh, Madam Hexa going to ride, she's hanging out with the mysterious, marvelous Maria Mew and Shay Lisi, and they're going to Bush Gardens. I don't blame you. That does sound better than what I had planned, so <laughs> I get it. I think that most people watching would probably choose to yeah, choose to go with them too. We didn't want to make the halflings angry. <laughs> Almost.
So we've shown my friend Eric Allard's latest custom bike a few times, but I've never done a detailed shot on it. This engine is fed by three Amal carbs, which dump fuel into Milwaukee 8 heads on top of Axtel shovel head cylinders on top of an Evo bottom end. Three magnetos fire it with a third set of spark plug holes being adapted from the M8 compression releases. The oil runs from the heads through the frame and an inline oil filter, and just everything about this bike is odd. A combination of ones, twos, and threes, but in no particular order, but done with such style that you constantly look to find some sort of order in the madness, but you never can quite catch it. It's always at the corner of your eye and always out of sight at the same time. Without a doubt, the best bike FNA has ever done and another huge inspiration for me. Make sure you're following FNA Customs on Instagram. He's always got great stuff coming out. three mounting points. It's the three mounting points, the three carbs, the three on one, on two, and nothing makes sense. No. A triangle, there you go. I like that, I like a bike that doesn't make sense. Because motorcycles themselves don't make sense. Oh, that mechanical throttle up here too, that's very cool. That guy Max in France that makes these. That is, oh. There's actually like ball bearings in there. It, it's really nice. And now on to choppers that aren't quite as good as the one you just saw. It's time for another episode of Will This Chopper Fit on My Harbor Freight Lift? Oh, whoa. Take two. Oh, barely, but we made it. Trust me, I know looking at this thing, it seems pretty dire, but there's actually a lot of good stuff on this chopper and we're gonna start with the good. The first good thing was the price. Didn't pay very much money for this. In fact, you couldn't get a small apartment in Tampa for what I paid for this per month or pretty much anywhere else for that matter. When a motorcycle is down in the uh, under four figures range, the stuff that's good about it starts really meaning a lot. So like I said, we're gonna start there because why not? We'll do the good stuff first because even though there's a lot of bad and a lot of stuff messed up about it, the good definitely outweighs that. I also want to remind everybody, Defiant Customs, the guy I got this from, Ray in Richmond, Virginia. By the way, look him up on Facebook if you live in the Richmond area and you need your Harley worked on, you know, vintage metric bike worked on or anything like that. Ray at Defiant Customs will hook it up. He's amazing. He knows his stuff. He didn't build this bike. This bike was built by a guy who used to work for him. He's a really nice kid. You know, he's a really good guy. Uh, but, you know, we did some funny stuff to the bike. But it's not, he didn't do this. He just sold me the bike because it was sitting under a carport at his place. So this has nothing to to do with Ray he gave me a killer deal on the thing but he didn't build any of this so don't hold this against him he's an amazing customizer an amazing mechanic and just a really good overall really great guy so anyway let's dive into the good starting off up top we have a TC bros throttle assembly up there that looks to be brand spanking new and it's on a set of I don't know whose bars these are assuming since it's got a TC brothers throttle assembly on it the bars are also TC bros they're a bit of a buckhorn style handlebar some people don't like buckhorns but I actually love love buckhorns. I think they're really comfortable and I actually think they look really good too. And they are dimpled and drilled for internal wiring. So I could take these off of here and throw them on a different project, a Harley Davidson that needed uh, dimpled bars or just uh, run some wires through them. So that's another score right there. I think that throttle assembly is about a hundred bucks. The bars from wherever they are, are probably about a hundred bucks. So we're at $200 worth of nice brand new stuff on it right away. I don't know where this headlight came from, but it looks to be in great shape. It's just an old school, regular incandescent light bulb and even though this is a little faded it is actually aluminum so that could polish up I don't know what that's worth but but even at a swap meet I mean you know 25 to 50 bucks for a nice headlight maybe even a little more because it's actually aluminum not plastic down here on the front end good and bad it's got that mini drum which just because it's so much cleaner and looks so much better than a disc front end talk all the crap you want about drums they're much more pretty in my opinion than a disc front end even though the discs look tough the bad about it is of course that the stay 
way over here has broken off. So that does present a problem, but I'm gonna ask my, my good buddy Weems Motor Co. if you can help me out with that one. Also in the good category back here, we got a brand new chain. Doesn't have a speck of rust on it, so that had to have been put on there not too long ago. And going right up here, and we've got some freshly rebuilt carburetors. So a bank of four rebuilt CB750 carburetors is, I don't know what you would buy that for on eBay, but I gotta imagine that's worth like three or four hundred dollars at least, if not more, for a working, functional, all the parts are there set of CB750 carburetors that have been rebuilt. I'm not going to use them, but it does have a set of brand new TC Bro CB750 Ford controls. I'm going to go back to mids because I like those on CB750s, even though my back doesn't like them, but they are there and they are worth some money. Coming up top, this old school coffin tank, even in a used condition, it's probably worth at least 150 bucks, if not more. I think if you're going to buy one brand new from TC Bros or Lowbrow Customs, they're over 200, but I could be wrong. And it's been lined professionally, which makes a difference. And even though I'm probably not going to keep this king queen seat back here, it has been recently reupholstered. It's not cheap to get a seat reupholstered. So again, probably this king queen seat back here by itself is got to be worth a couple hundred bucks at least. Well, I could definitely do without the tough guy skull on it, but this is actually a really cool oil tank. It doesn't have to be a CB750 oil tank. It's just an oil tank. So I might keep it. I might not. Something tells me that it's backwards from the way the battery is fitting in there would assume to be have to face the other way but i'm not sure either way i like the shape of it i like that it's this kind of a, is a hexagon how many sides does it have one two three four five six seven eight eight octagon that's eight it's an octagon and i think it looks really cool i just don't quite like how the battery fits in there but either way a nice piece to come with this motorcycle and another example of good and bad we have this girder front end i say good and bad because it's of unknown origin i don't know if it's worth a crap the welds look good on on it. It's just, it's got this coating on it that makes it look like shelving that you get from Walmart or something. And I'm not sure what this coating is. And it's obvious it's steel underneath it, but it's kind of weird and if i was going to run the bike i obviously would want to get rid of it and either have it chromed or powder coated or if it's stainless underneath there shine it up but i i doubt it's stainless steel under there but it's a good and a bad because it's just of unknown origins i don't really know about it the problem with girder front ends and a lot of bringer front ends is if you see here this is just straight up and down on the neck so you get almost no turning ability now a lot of them are like that but when you look at like what a harley davidson front end looks like over there on my xs 650 chopper you'll see that it actually comes forward. Here's where it meets the neck and here's where the forks actually are. So you have that space in between the neck of the bike, the frame, and where the triple trees actually hold the forks. Now that's so you can actually get a decent turning radius. Whereas on this girder, it is that is not the case so you really uh, you ain't gonna be doing any kind of u-turns on this thing and that's not the case with every single springer and every single girder a lot of them come forward in the same way but some of the cheaper ones uh they just don't do that and uh i don't really like that but it's still if the front end was chromed if this was chromed instead of this weird wrinkle i'm not really don't know what that is if it was chromed uh completely it is still really a cool looking front end. So we'll go good and bad in that one. Can't leave out another good, even though I haven't heard it run yet. Uh, it has good compression, a complete CB750 motor, even if everything else got thrown away and I just had the stuff that I got off this thing with the motor and everything else I've just listed. I have got parts that are worth way more, substantially more than I actually paid for the bike. So we're gonna go ahead and call this one a good deal. Now let's uh, move on to the bad. Uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly here. There's definitely some ugly too, but we'll move on to the bad first. <laughs> I don't quite know about these uh, spacers that were made for this rear fender. I don't know if this rear fender was supposed to come on here or uh, or what exactly is happening or if somebody widened it and, and it's not the way it's supposed to be, but this is actually part of the frame. You know, not really sure about the sissy bar holding on the seat here. I have to go ahead and change that. It's a shame it's welded on like that because I actually really like this, this sissy bar, this kind of three prong style, very indicative of 70s bikes and I actually kind of dig it, but I don't know, maybe I can clean it up here. Of course, the chrome's never coming back at that point once you start grinding that stuff off, but yeah, we could powder coat it. I'm also, now that I have this up on the lift, gonna go ahead and guess that uh, maybe this rear fender wasn't supposed to be on here. Yeah. 
I'm gonna go ahead and go with another bad over here is uh, someone has seen fit to remove the electric starter from this bike. Now, unless I'm wrong, and I don't think I am, I think that CBs always came with electric start. They were never kick only, so I'm seeing some empty space over here. And <laughs> I think it used to have an electric starter, and I wonder if that's because this is a custom frame and it didn't fit or, or what. I don't think it was a weight savings thing. It can't weigh that much, but either way, it does not have a starter assembly. Not that big of a deal because CB750 these are really easy to kick, way easier than any other motorcycle I've had to kick over besides the Trail 125. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and let these uh, let these pipes fixtures speak for themselves. I don't I don't want to talk too much crap here, but uh, yeah, these are <laughs> these are kind of goofy, man. Now this exhaust, when it was brand new, was probably like four or five hundred bucks, but uh, we have a a few issues <laughs> with it and. Uh, I don't, um, I just don't think that's gonna be salvageable. So yeah, exhaust is in order as well. I said the good, the bad, and the ugly. And here we're gonna go ahead and go into the ugly. Originally, I thought I was gonna keep this frame exactly how it was as a swinger, but now I'm not so sure. Only because there's some stuff on the bottom of it that I'm really, it doesn't seem right. So if you look down here, you know, this is where you would uh, have your normal mid control pegs, but if you look, in here at the frame at this gap where this all thread is sticking out. Um, that's not supposed to be there. Like this is, this is actually supposed to fit flush against the engine in a stock CB750. Now, I don't know if that's because this is an aftermarket frame. I can certainly make spacers and put them in there and that's not really that big of a deal. But the fact that they're not in there really weirds me out. Obviously, like you wouldn't want to ride the motorcycle around like that. You'd just be have horrendous vibrations back there without it in the frame properly because regardless, in the front here, since it's uh, stretched and raked, CB750s usually have a mount up top too that this no longer has. So the fact that you've pretty much just got the front engine mounts right now and the back Back ones aren't even actually touching the engine. They're just kind of holding it in place with a rod. Definitely not ideal. I'm not sure how the hardtails fit on, but I'm not sure if they like go into that spot or not and could fix that issue or if I'm just gonna have to put some spacers in there. But either way, definitely weirded me out. Definitely what I would say is uh, the ugliest part of the bike and the part that I'm, out of anything else, the part I'm actually concerned with. Again, we can make spacers. Making a spacer, making a, an aluminum spacer to fit in there is not a big deal you know you make wheel spacers not a problem at all it just weirds me out that it's sitting like that with a piece of all thread in there so that 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 is that is very strange but we'll just have to address that later i kind of wanted to keep it as a swinger because this is an original frame that somebody made in the 70s so I feel kind of bad cutting apart a survivor but also at the same time i don't feel that bad because there's a lot about it that's not built that well you're going like okay yeah somebody made this frame in the 70s it's a survivor but it's not exactly the best survivor okay it's survivor by luck of the draw, not because it was great. Who am I to say anything? Who am I to talk? What can I say, man? I'm, I'm just as bad, I'm just as horrible. I look at over, over this bike and some of the mistakes and the bad welds and the dumb things that have been done to it. And I just see stuff I've done, stuff I still might do every once in a while because like I said, I'm not a great welder. I'm not a great fabricator. I've got a lot of friends who are and uh, I know when I'm out of my depth and that's kind of the skill level that I'm at now. I know when I can't do it and when I should ask for help. And that's an important step, okay? That's a very important step. The good, the bad, the ugly, the silver roach, baby. It's not the silver roach. This is, it's the landlord's roach. It's the roach that got, that got painted over <laughs> in the apartment. They didn't even bother to pull it off the wall, but uh, I think we can turn it into something a little bit cooler. Well, it seems fitting that I should end this video exactly the same way as I started this video. On a Honda visiting the boys at the ride factory. A lot of motorcycle shops that do a lot of things. But I will tell you, I bet that your motorcycle shop, I bet that your guys don't make you a cake when it's Christmas time. <laughs> and whatever else happens, that's what makes everyone here so freaking special. So thank you very much, my friend. Crashing through the sky comes a fearful cry. Shade tree. Shade tree. Army. Armies of the night. Evil taking flight. Shade tree. Army. Shade tree. Army. Nowhere to run. Nowhere to hide. Panic spreading far and wide. Can the world oppose the deadly? of foes.
They never say die Walking tall with banners high Shade Tree Army, a ruthless gang of scum, villains, freaks, and bikers Determined to rule the world 